Hognose eggs have finally arrived, and today we're going to go over the very simple process of how you can get your hognose snakes to produce eggs and then produce babies as well. We're going to learn how to breed hognose snakes. I'm Adam, you're watching Wicked's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. snake breeding is pretty simple, even more simple than a lot of other colubrids. And the reason I don't have one in my hands right now is because, well, they're paired up again. They're doing this. So let's go over from beginning to end how you do it. Step one is really simple. Sex them and get them up to size. You can't breed two males. You can't breed two females. So the first thing is make sure that you've got a male, you've got a female, and then bring them up to size. And what I mean by up to size, females, bare minimum, in my opinion, 250 grams or 300 grams is where I like to have my girl uh, with males they can breed as low as 45 grams some people will say even less than that my boy Nikki here uh, he's right about 60 65 70 grams uh, the last time I, I weighed him he was 67 grams or so he fluctuates throughout the season so once you have a pair that is sexed you know what they are and they're up to size it's time to get to work. Now, step number two is optional, and a lot of people are gonna tell me that uh, you should do this, brumation. Brumation, just to make it very simple, you cool down the snakes so that it's kind of like a hibernation for them for about three months and you bring them back up to temperature. That kind of stimulates the breeding response so that they actually want to breed and produce eggs for you, but I don't think it's necessary. In fact, this is my second year in a row producing uh, hognose snake eggs, and these ones are better than the last, and. I'll put it out there. I know I've only been doing it for two years, for hognose snakes anyway, so I am no expert. This is just how I do it. But let's explain how you would brumate your snakes if you wanted to do that. If you want to brumate your snakes, this is the way that most people do it. Basically, uh, make sure that they're empty, right? So don't feed them for about three weeks. Make sure their entire digestive tract is empty because when you cool them down, they're gonna be almost immobile, not moving around a whole bunch, and if they've got food in them, then likely it's gonna just rot inside of them, and that can cause big issues and including death. So what a lot of breeders would suggest, and I, I've spoken to several breeders about this over the last four years or five years, uh, when I first got my, my two tiny little babies, it takes a little while, Ekans and Nikki were just little tiny little worms, and I brought them up to size. And when I was speaking uh, and doing my research over the last, I guess, five years now, I, I found out that 55 degrees is basically where you want them. Some people will say as low as 50 or as high as 60. 55 is generally where you want to have them. And bring them down gradually. Don't take them from their rack where they've got their hot spot. By the way, care guide up here if you just want to know how to take care of hognose snakes. And then toss them into a 55 degree cellar. It doesn't work like that. What I would suggest and what has been suggested to me is uh, just turn off the heat tape first day. So they're gonna be in the reptile room or wherever you have them. Just turn off the belly heat. The next day, bring them down so that they're not in your reptile room so they get, I don't know, 70-ish degrees. And then you can bring them down into either your cellar if it's 55 degrees or if you use a wine cooler, a lot of people do that. Put them in the wine cooler. And you can put them in smaller containers. So just stick them into something a little bit tinier. Uh, make sure they've got a water bowl and a hide and leave them down there. Make sure it's dark, make sure it's cool. Most people do this December to March. So beginning of December, you put them down. Uh, beginning of January is month number one. February and beginning of March is month number three. And then what you do is you bring them back up to temperature rather slowly. Bring them out one level in your house, put them in the rack, and next day turn on the rack. Or some people just slam on the heat immediately it's really up to you and it's been done a bunch of different ways. Now I say this is optional because I've never done this. What I do instead, very simple, I light cycle. So I've got these smart plugs and they are just tuned to when the sun goes up, they go on. And when the sun goes off, they go off. When the sun goes off, when the sun goes down, they go off. So it's like a true uh, seasonal light cycle. And because of this, because the lights uh, for the entire room is what I'm talking about, not just hog noses, but my ball pythons, uh, skink, everything, light cycles like this. And this works for ball pythons. We'll do another video another day. And this produces seasons. So instead of uh, temperature really having to go down to the, you know, 55 degrees at night, it might drop down to 65. But during the day, they're going to get basically their normal temperatures. 
the room doesn't heat up as much because the lights aren't on for as long. And then I start pairing them beginning of January. Next is pairing. I start pairing mine at the middle or end of January. A lot of people don't start until March, obviously, right? Because that's when they take them out of brumation. And a lot of people do it one of two ways. Either you'll start feeding the female and the male first and get a bunch of meals into them before you start uh, introducing the pairs. What I do is I just, well, I guess there's no brumation, but some people will just put them together immediately and then they'll start breeding. I like to make sure that my female is up to weight, male is up to weight. I introduce them and very important, you've got to observe because in the rare case, there are females that kind of like to eat the males if they're super small because females will be a lot bigger than the males, right? If you remember 250, 300 grams versus 45 or 75 grams for the males. Now I've never had this problem. And in fact, they just get along just splendid by the way. So what I've got here is a head albino anaconda morph male hognose snake. And then my girl Ekans, which you'll remember from last year or a ton of other videos as well. Uh, she is just an albino or extreme red albino female who produced some really gorgeous babies last year, like my boy Onyx here. I get asked a lot, how long do you leave the male in with a female? And this is subjective. The way that I do it is I do it until I see a confirmed lock. I see them lock, which by the way, I did last night. Some car alarm was going off. 3 a.m. went down to the reptile room just for fun. And sure enough, they were locked up. Or if I don't see a visual lock, I can't confirm that they actually locked up. Instead, I leave them in for two days. So male in with a female for two days or until a lock, put them back in the enclosure, feed them both, wait two days, put them back together. And the reason I do this is because if you feed and then immediately have the male chasing around the female, oftentimes she may regurgitate. Very, very unlikely, but just in case, I always wait a couple of days and then throw them together. Feed the male once a week or twice if you feed really small meals, uh, and the female, I feel too feel. I feed two small meals instead of one bigger one like I would normally throughout the year. Uh, just a little bit easier for it to digest. She's producing eggs. She's got enough stress and enough stuff going on with her body. Make life easy for her. Or I'll pair like this for maybe four, five, six weeks. If I don't see the female looking like she's producing, um, well, she's ovulating and starting to produce eggs, I, I just keep going. Last year it took a little bit longer. I started pairing uh, the beginning of January or the middle of January and I didn't get eggs until May. This year I started pairing on the 27th of January and I got eggs on the 17th of March. So in general, 28 to 45 days between when they actually start to take that sperm and start producing eggs uh, until they actually lay the eggs. And you'll know right when they're about to lay eggs or seven to 12 days on average before, they're gonna have a pre-lay shed. This just means that they're going to shed their skin seven to 12 days on average before they lay their eggs. So for me, my girl was not in that time frame, but was pretty close. Ekans had her pre-lay shed on March 3rd, and then on March 17th, happy St. Patrick's Day to me, boom, 18 good eggs and two slugs. Now an anomaly, you'll see this sometimes, the female may lay one egg outside of her lay box, which we'll talk about in a second, a few days prior, uh, and it's usually a slug, and then the rest of the clutch will come. And with Ekans last year, she laid everything at the same time, but she laid, I think it was seven good eggs and seven bad eggs, or six and six. Uh, either way, only three of them hatched last year. This year, I got one slug on the 13th, Friday the 13th. On the 17th, I got the rest of the clutch, and the very last egg that she laid was a slug also. So 18 good and 20 bad, which by the way is pretty big, because on average, eight to 25 is where you're gonna see a clutch size, but I've only really seen them over 20 a handful of times. Now this video is getting pretty long, so let's kind of speed it along, lay boxes. Lay boxes, uh, just basically sphagnum moss or a wet substrate like a coconut core, which is what I use, or something like that in a container that is small enough that the snake will feel confined and secure, but not too small where she can't lay her eggs and move around and she's gonna crush the eggs, which very unlikely, but something like a sandwich container depending on the size of the female, or what you can do and what I do is I take my female from her regular enclosure, I put her into a kind of moistened rack system that has a humidity a little bit too high for a hognose snake normally, but it's only for a few days and she'll lay in the entire lay box, which is the entire enclosure. I use a 28 quart tub and just throw it in a rack system and I check every couple of days, make sure she's got water and somewhere to hide behind and 
that's it. So now you've got your eggs. That's kind of what this video is for, how to get the eggs. Uh, just quickly how to incubate, very simple. Take perlite or vermiculite, uh, put it into a container. I use these sandwich containers. I think they're 1.5 liters or something like that. Uh, just moistened it up so that when you grab it and you squeeze it, it doesn't start dripping. That's basically it. There's a whole bunch, one part uh, vermiculite or one part water to two parts vermiculite or a whole bunch of recipes. You can weigh it out. I just do it by feel. I spray it with a spray bottle until I can kind of feel and I mix it around. And then once I feel like it's moist enough, I'll start squeezing. If water comes out, I know it's too much, but generally just make sure that it's pretty moist and that's it. Take your finger, make little indents into the substrate, take the eggs, put them in the way that you found them. Do not switch the eggs. Do not um, turn the eggs. Put them in, mark them with a marker so you know which way is up, and then just leave them. You can either put a couple air holes and then never touch them for 50 to 60 days, which is how long it takes to hatch normally, depending on your temperature, which you'll want to incubate 78 to 84 degrees. I incubate mine around 82 because I want female leopard geckos. I use the same incubator and you can learn how to make baby leopard geckos up here if you'd like. And then after a little while, you get to make really cool videos like the one I made right here. A lot of cards in this video, I, I, I get it. About how to have baby hognose snakes and how to take care of them and what you gotta do. Um, we're gonna do another video in about 60 days or 55 days now that it's been a few days since that's happened, since she's laid her eggs. And we're gonna do a video about them hatching and how to take care of little baby snakes. That'll happen May 15th-ish. Uh, stick around for that. Hit subscribe if you're not subscribed already. That'd be awesome. And then you want to feed that female. She'll eat immediately. Ekans, she laid her last egg. I grabbed it, which was a slug. I'm incubating it anyway, just for fun. Uh, just to see, you never know. Um, basically, the difference between a good egg and a bad egg. Good eggs look like this, and slugs look like this. Very simple. Very easy to tell, they look completely different. Now there's two reasons why you wanna feed the female. First of all, she's depleted. She made a bunch of eggs and now they're gone. <laughs> she squeezed them out of her. She looks like an empty tube of toothpaste basically now. Uh, she looks very small in comparison. Get the weight back on her, make sure she's healthy, feed her two small meals a week, and then sometimes colubrids double clutch. That means you can get not one, but two clutches of eggs. Generally, the second one's smaller than the first one, and Ekans didn't double clutch for me last year, but that was my fault. And when I was spoke to a bunch of breeders about why this happened, I think that I didn't feed her enough, fast enough. I waited five days before I fed her, or three days actually, sorry, before I fed her the first meal. This time, she squeezed out the eggs, and I fed her that day, like a few hours later, and she ate like she has been starved to death for her entire life, like she's never seen a little baby mouse. So. I fed her and then I fed her again three days later. I put them back together because what you can do is you can put the male back with the female and although she may double clutch without the reintroduction of a male uh, because she can retain the sperm and make more eggs without doing that, without having the male in again, uh, just to make sure that she's super fertile, I go ahead and take Nikki and I put her back in or put him back in I should say uh, with Ekans and then wham bam, Bob's your uncle. Maybe you'll have more baby snakes in another 28 to 45 days, but generally, if you reintroduce them right away, or even if you don't, you'll probably have two clutches of eggs in the incubator before the first one hatches, which is the only way you'd have two because one didn't hatch because you don't put them. That's how you do it. That's how you breed hogwash snakes. Sorry, this video was kind of rushed and wham bam. I, I just didn't want to make it a marathon video and I, I can't hold a snake for you because they're well, they're together right now. So I wanted to make sure that uh, I was entertaining enough and I didn't bore you. So what do you think? Uh, is this, was this helpful? Have you done this before? Is there something I missed or I should have added or said wrong? Just throw in the comment section. Uh, what should I do next week? One of you wanted an update on the hognose snake. So here we go. This is what I did for you. Um, put your comment down there. I take every video suggestion on the comments below. Hit subscribe if you haven't already down here. That'd be awesome. Uh, we've got a new Discord channel. I don't even know what that is, but join that. We can talk. New merch store is up. You can see that in the shelf below. Holy cow, just, I'm just gonna, I'll, I'll see you on Thursday.